Utilities, the shared use of data in the financial world, are helping institutions improve efficiency and effectiveness. This collaborative approach to the transparent provision of information is also boosting Know Your Customer initiatives and fraud prevention. In the future, it may also help to improve systems in sanctions and anti-money laundering. Joining me now to explore the benefits of using collaborative approaches to fight financial crime are two Cybus Conference panelists, Patricia Sullivan, Global Co-Head of Financial Crime Compliance at Standard Chartered, and Matt Brown, Global Head of Compliance Screening, Vetting, and Regulatory Compliance Services at HSBC. Welcome to you both to Cybos TV. I'm going to start with you, Trish. Uh, what do you think the landscape of compliance systems will look like in the future? And what role will utilities play in this, do you think? Are they applicable beyond the banking landscape? Thanks, Johnny. We're definitely on a journey of evolving how compliance looks right now, and particularly in financial crimes compliance, and that's very much by absolute necessity. The business of financial crime is a top 10 industry. Year on year, financial crime proceeds are growing. This is due to a couple of primary drivers. One, increased use of digital channels by criminals. Uh, the growth of criminal networks as a service or as professional networks. And then third, and unfortunately, underinvestment by regimes around the world who are originating or receiving the largest amount of financial crime proceeds, underinvestment in law enforcement and effective prosecutions for financial crime. There's a growing recognition by the Financial Action Task Force, by law enforcement, by our supervisors, and by the financial sector that we need to find new ways to modernize the fight against financial crime. And we're on that journey, but we need to do more. Two areas where we most definitely are focusing include the use of innovation in our compliance processes. How do we bring artificial intelligence, machine learning, natural language processing to screening, transaction monitoring, KYC, and then the growth of utilities. But before I speak about utilities, I want to ask, what is a utility? How is that defined? So in financial crime compliance, for me, a utility is when we bring together data sets or information under a shared entity or platform to perform a shared service that's more efficient and more effective than we're currently doing today. The case has already been made for KYC as a utility, but there's certainly more that we can do. Uh, you asked, is this just for the banking sector? No, it's absolutely something that needs to uh, belong in the public sector as well. And it's only by bringing together those data sets from the public and the private sector that will be most effective. Matt, are we, uh, are we seeing an increasing industry interest in compliance utilities? And perhaps could you tell us how KYC, Know Your Customer uh, Utilities, have helped banks respond to de-risking challenges and, and how they've improved customer insights? Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's probably three main opportunities here. Um, I think the opportunity of bringing and pooling your resources, your intelligence, your data and also your standards uh, is very important. So the opportunity to bring everything together, um, there's an opportunity for the client experience. So trying to move uh, transactions faster through uh, a corresponding banking network. Um, and I also think that there's um, an angle here about deduplication. So we're doing things multiple times. Let's actually do it once, but do it really, really well. Mm. Um, from a KYC perspective, um, there's about 1.3 million bilateral correspondent banking relationships in our industry. And that brings with it a pretty heavy burden um, of administration. Uh, and so bringing together a common platform is, makes just a lot of sense. But I think most importantly, and where the opportunity arises with KYC, is about the standardization. The standardization of the platform, yes, but the policy and also the questionnaire that you're using. And a good example of that would be the Wolfsburg Correspondent Banking DDQ um, activity that's uh, been around now for you know, 12, 15 months, really has brought the industry together in creating a common platform and a common standard. How have utilities in fraud prevention helped banks respond to the risks, Trish? So the use of utilities in fraud prevention actually 
is the oldest use of a utility model. So initiatives such as the Gimlet here in the UK certainly gets well-deserved recognition from the FATF for being effective in bringing together different data sets to be more effective in, in fighting financial crime. But if you look at fraud, we're actually in the 20th anniversary of the first utility model that was brought together uh, to tackle fraud, mostly cyber fraud. Uh, and that goes back to uh, developments from the uh, financial services information sharing uh, group known as FSISAC, as well as the National Cyber Forensics Training Alliance. They bring together different data sets to help protect the industry from fraud intrusions. But we need to take that even further now, especially with the growth of faster payments and how can we bring a utility model for fraud into real-time fraud detection screening? Uh, and this is an area where there's great potential. Uh, SWIFT, especially with the development of SWIFT GPI, we now have payments with a unique identifier number, which really opens up a lot of opportunities to be more effective in our screening services. Uh, with fraud, I see a lot of potential, not only within one bank, but at a utility model. For example, it's still early days, but there is now the technology being deployed where we can do live screening to see if there's a fraud typology at work and actually move to stop a fraud before it happens. Uh, like I said, it's early days. We need to make sure that those scenarios are effective. And we can also then consider applying it to a broader data set as a utility model. I think there's a lot of potential to have effective typologies run in this area because fraud is binary. It either is a fraud or it's not a fraud. So you can get good feedback on whether the scenario is effective. Unlike anti-money laundering where we run scenarios, but there's not strong feedback that what we've actually detected is money laundering. So I feel optimistic that fraud as a utility model is in the future. Mm. As Trish mentioned there, sanctions and screenings, Matt, and AML, anti-money laundering, uh, they're, they're complex and inefficient processes for banks, but how might utilities help these areas? I think it's um, less about the inefficiency, um, but what we're looking for is the effectiveness. So we're looking to identify, you know, we, uh, identify more financial crime activity when we do these activities, and, and for me, the more that we actually come together in a utility, the more that we pool our resources and our thought processes and our standards, the greater chance we have of identifying risk together. And actually that's the key thing here, less about the, ineff the inefficiency, but about trying to do more in the effectiveness side. Uh, you talk about sort of collaborative uh, tendencies there. Cybos itself is, is full of different people trying to collaborate. Uh, why are utilities and collaborative solutions so important in the fight against financial crime? The main reason that we need to work together is to see the end-to-end -end picture. Um, what we know is that as a, as a transaction or as an activity moves through various correspondent banks, what we see is one part of the jigsaw. We don't see the whole picture. So what's really important is that when we come together and we understand the end-to-end -end picture, it's easier and more effective for us to actually understand whether or not financial crime has been committed, to identify that and hopefully get ahead of it and prevent it rather than after the fact. Trish, I'm going to ask you for the answers here. How can we, how can we be successful? What are the enablers that will make utilities successful? Great. As Matt said, we need to bring this data together in order to see the end-to-end -end picture. Uh, we will each hold individual pieces of the puzzle. And by we, I don't just mean we as banks. I mean law enforcement as well and other partners um, in civil society. When we bring that together, we'll be more successful. In my view, the core enablers to help build these models first include stakeholder support and engagement. And there are a couple of stakeholders, our supervisors. It's really important that we have the supervisors on the journey with us to building information sharing and utility models. FATFM has supported this in, in recent guidance, and it's something that we're seeing several regulators and key markets supporting as well, and that's really um, important. Additional stakeholder support we'll need to be successful is from our own boards. 
these types of initiatives take budget and it's not an overnight journey. So we need to work internally in our own banks to build the stakeholder support for these projects, but then at the same time, be working externally with our supervisors. And like I say, it's not, it is an evolution, it's not a revolution. Uh, we're building on what works in the past, understanding what didn't work and moving on from there. The second key enabler is data. Um, if the data that we're building utilities around is not high quality, we're not going to be successful. We can have top data, one, through standardization, uh, such as what some of the ISO standards are bringing in place. The more standardized the data is, the more we'll be able to connect different data pools together. And then also quality. We need to start at home in our own banks in making sure that from an end-to-end -end view, we have good data quality frameworks in place to make sure that what we view internally, but also what we put into utility model is, is of high quality. And then I think the last core enabler I would add is be brave enough to be the first. It's easy to just stay put and do what you're doing, but to make the effort, bring the stakeholders together to build a utility and information sharing model takes a lot of work, but someone has to be first and there, we have some good precedents behind us, but we're breaking into new ground now with transaction monitoring and screening utilities. And Matt, to you, uh, some of the enablers into creating successful utilities. I think that, to Trish's point around being brave or being bold, mm. um, I think that's important. I think it's, um, it's key to, to draw that vision out, what that looks like in the future. Trish is right. Um, you know, we could, our, our organizations across the industry, we're in a place now where we've invested a lot of energy and a lot of time and a lot of money in terms of being technically compliant. Um, it would be easy just to say, you know what, we'll just carry on doing, you know, doing it ourselves. But actually, what we're trying to achieve here when, you, when it real, really boils down to it is we're looking to fight financial crime for the communities that we live and work in. So for me, it's about bringing together that picture, um, overcoming those barriers, and actually saying we are going to do this. This is for the greater good of the organizations, and it's for the greater good of the community. Well, guys, we'd love to speak to you further on a, an incredibly important topic to the industry, but that is the time that we have. Patricia Sullivan, Global Co-Head of Financial Crime Compliance at Standard Chartered, and Matt Brown, Global Head of Compliance Screening, Vetting, and Regulatory Compliance Services at HSBC. I wish you both a very fine Cybos 2019. Thank you very much for joining us on Cybos TV. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.